I, I guess a, a relatively conservative forecast is that for the first half of this year, we could see it breach 26, which if you look at, you know, sort of technically, that seems to be a bit of a ceiling. I think it's going to breach that in the next few months, this next quarter. Um, and then once we breach that in a meaningful way, I think that's going to start to become a new floor. And so we're going to really see it stay above 26. And I think in the second half of this year, we could easily see $28, maybe better. But for now, I'm willing to say we'll see probably 28 uh, before the year is out. My goodness. At this point, I think that this year we're going to probably see 2500 I think that, that becomes realistic. Gold has long been spotlighted outpacing silver in performance over recent years. However, signs suggest that the tables may soon favor silver. Forecasts indicate a fourth consecutive yearly deficit in global silver supplies, coupled with a surge in demand to its second highest level on record. This raises the potential for silver prices to rally, with some projections even suggesting a doubling by the end of 2024. Furthermore, global silver demand is forecast to rise by 1%, to 1.2 billion ounces this year, marking the second highest level on record. According to industry experts, this uptick is primarily attributed to stronger industrial offtake. Peter Krauth, known for the Great Silver Bull, highlights the challenge posed by rising industrial demand, which reduces available silver for investment. One significant issue contributing to this is the limited recycling of silver used in industry due to logistical constraints and high costs. This leads to considerable silver remaining tied up in industrial applications, worsening the scarcity of investable silver. Despite increasing demand, silver prices have remained relatively capped in recent years. Surpluses in previous years typically flowed into secondary inventories like futures markets or silver ETFs. However, structural deficits in the silver market over the past four years have substantially depleted these secondary inventories. Major futures markets and silver ETFs have seen inventory declines of about 40%, indicating a diminished supply for investment. Of particular note is the substantial drop in inventories backing silver ETFs like SLV, the world's largest silver ETF in recent years. Historically, ETF inventories remained relatively stable, even during declining silver prices. However, recent years have seen a marked decrease in silver supporting these ETFs, signaling increased consumption and decreased availability for investment purposes. Peter sees that this shift underscores the evolving dynamics of the silver market and the potential for a significant re-evaluation of silver's investment prospects in the coming years. We will present clips from Peter Krauth's interview with ITM Trading. Before we start, please subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this. Thanks and enjoy. You know, if you look at the silver market, it, it really is gradually becoming more of an, an industrial metal. We're already now at about 60% of, of uh, consumption or, or demand going towards uh, industry. But that just makes uh, the, um, uh, in other words, more silver being consumed by industry leaves less silver available for investment. So I think that when you get the investment demand really kick in, to really kick in, that's when um, you're going to have uh, an even bigger uh, effect from that because you simply have less silver being made available for investment. A lot of it is uh, getting consumed. And as we know, uh, you know, follow the silver industry, consumed silver uh, by industrial, the industrial side, very, uh, very little of that ends up getting recycled just because uh, so much is used in small quantities and the cost to recycle is doesn't justify the um, the the pursuit of, of, of getting the silver back out and, and back into the market. If you look at, um, you know, you've got really two sides to the to the investment demand, or sorry, to, to overall demand, you've got industrial and then you've got um, investment demand. Anything beyond that, so that's sort of, let's say when in a year where you have a silver surplus, uh, goes into secondary inventories, that gets stashed into the futures markets, it goes into silver ETFs, for example, and it accumulates there. But in the last four years, we've had deficits and structural deficits in the silver market. So, you know, a, a structural deficit doesn't mean that the consumers, especially the industrial consumers, are not getting their silver. They're still getting it from somewhere. And it, it, mo the most obvious source is that they're getting it from these secondary inventories. So if you look at the major um, the major 
futures markets and the ETFs. So the major futures markets would be the COMEX, the LBMA and Shanghai, and then the, the global e silver ETFs. You see something really interesting. So the pattern is for the last four years, those inventories have been steadily drawing down. And if you look at overall inventories in, in, the, three, uh, in the three futures markets, they're down about 40%. Now, inventories are not all available for delivery. It's only what we call registered silver in those markets that's available for delivery. And the registered silver is actually down closer to 70% in the last three to four years. And, you know, I do obviously my own proprietary research on, on the silver side. And if you look at the silver ETFs, like I say, they've seen their, um, their, inventories gradually fall. Now, SLV is the world's largest silver ETF. And if you go back to inception, which was 2006, there has not been, until the last few years, there has not been a sustained period where if the silver price was either rising or going sideways, that their holdings, so the, the quantity of silver backing that ETF was actually falling. That's never happened. It's only started to happen in the last few years. So prior to that, even if you had big corrections in the silver price, you would see very small and very temporary drops in their silver inventories. Now in the last few years, you've seen something like 30 to 40% drop in, in the silver that backs uh, the SLV and, and silver ETFs globally. So, so bottom line is this, I think that in both the, the futures uh, markets, and with the silver ETFs, you have large players who go in, who, who need to consume the silver, are buying long futures contracts, standing for delivery when those mature, and or buying silver ETFs and trading in their units for, uh, for the physical silver, taking delivery. March 2024 witnessed an exceptional performance in the gold market, marking its strongest monthly gain since July 2020 at 8.5%. This surge, reminiscent of the COVID-19 pandemic stimulus period, propelled gold prices to unprecedented heights, surpassing $2,220 per troy ounce. The momentum is fueled by expectations of major central banks cutting interest rates, signaling a sustained rally. Notably, gold has reached all-time highs against most currencies, with the Swiss franc being the final holdout, now breached, indicating a potentially prolonged rally. However, as Peter highlighted, Concerns loom regarding Turkey's staggering 36% inflation rate, which reached a 19-year high and impacted nearly 84 million citizens' purchasing power. This economic turbulence has led to a surge in silver prices, emerging as a compelling alternative to gold. Similarly, Egypt, traditionally inclined towards gold gifts, is witnessing a shift towards silver due to its affordability. It reflects changing demand dynamics with notable import spikes in India and Turkey, Assessing the silver market dynamics in 2023 reveals significant disparities between forecasts and actual outcomes. While projections hinted at modest growth in supply and demand, reality painted a different picture, with supply dwindling, industrial demand surpassing expectations, and solar demand outpacing forecasts by a substantial margin. Consequently, the supply deficit for 2023 far exceeded initial estimates hinting at potential price pressures in the silver market's near future. Let's get back to the interview. One of the questions I keep getting is, is this, is this really going to be sustained? And frankly, one of the interesting right. indicators is to look at what happens with, with currencies versus gold, for example. And you typically can have uh, a more sustained gold rally. You can have more confidence in the rally if it's happening in all the major currencies. There was one holdout. Now, a few weeks back, we had all-time highs in, in gold and that, you know, consisted uh, or stayed consistent for, for several days, a week, in fact. The last holdout was the, the Swiss franc, uh, oddly enough. And we had that a few days ago. We, we have a sort of, you know, one uh, big indicator that we can, that this, this breakout is likely to be sustained. And Turkey, as you said, um, something like 65, 67% to annual inflation. The price of silver in Turkey, the Turkish lira has, uh, is up seven times in the last three years. And then you have Egypt where um, gold is traditionally being used as a gift for uh, newlywed brides, uh, for newborns. And they're saying, 
in Egypt, silver is the new gold. They're turning to, to silver instead because they're finding it too expensive. Price of silver has uh, has doubled in the past couple of years in in uh, in Egypt. So you know that shows how the demand really is is shifting, and you have uh, India has uh, has seen its imports of silver soaring. Turkey has seen its imports of silver soaring. Um, really, uh, this is sort of staying under the radar, I think, for a little while, but it's going to change. I, I, I even put, you know, together um, for for my uh, my presentation in, in a recent uh, in a recent conference, I looked at what some of the the dynamic was in terms of uh, forecasts and then eventual. Um, actual results. So I call it the silver 2023 realities. The supply forecast for silver was that uh, it was actually going to grow in 2023 by 2%. In fact, it fell by 2%. Industrial demand thought they thought it was going to grow by 4%. It was revised. The growth was revised up 8%. Solar demand was forecast to be 140 million ounces of silver last year. It was revised to 190 million ounces. And then the supply deficit for 2023 was forecast at 142 million ounces. And then they revised that to 194 million ounces. These are really big misses. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's very much um, off. I think that the market is very much being underestimated. And I think the pressure on the price uh, from the supply that these industrial users are able to get from this, these secondary inventories that I explained earlier, that's got a limited life. If I had to guess, I'd say 12, 18 months. Um, anything could happen in the meantime. But if nothing you know, explosive happens to silver before then, which, which I certainly doubt, but if it did, um, I think that's, that's going to be the limit of these secondary supplies. The possibility of silver reaching a new all-time high in 2024 has piqued the interest of many investors. Peter's forecast indicates a conservative yet promising outlook for silver prices. He suggests that we could witness silver surpassing the $26 mark in the first half of the year. While historically acting as a ceiling, this level is expected to be breached in the coming months, possibly within the next quarter. Once $26 is surpassed, it could become a new support level for silver prices, maintaining them above this threshold. Peter targets $28 for the year's second half, with potential for further gains. Share your thoughts on Peter's prediction in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.